Hello and welcome aboard Virgin Voyages Scarlet Lady. My name is Richard and I want to give you a full, unedited a ship tour of Virgin Voyages Scarlet Lady today. This is exactly where you get on board. It is the last day of our cruise. We did sail in November of 2021. Uh, last day of our cruise, which is a sea day. And the ship is currently sailing with 800 passengers out of a total of 2,400. So it's sailing at one third capacity. But this is the area right where you get on board the actual boat, uh, the actual ship. And you know, we've got all this seating and things like that. This is where you have the open deck that you can walk around on. You've got a lot of loungers all over, which we will see at the pool later. This is also the lifeboat and embarkation deck. But right here is at least in Miami, in the port of Miami, where you would get on board. So you get on board and you would go right through this door. I want to give you a kind of a full unedited tour of what is going on here. So we go right in and this is the equivalent of say a grand foyer here. So this is the equivalent of a grand foyer. There's the ice cream game show going on right now, which is an actual thing that happens on board. We got these nice little screens right there. And you'll see there's the grand foyer and the ice cream game show going on right now. What's really cool is this, these lights right here actually point as a compass in the direction of the way the ship is going. So we'll go down and this is the main staircase, essentially the main atrium. And what I want to show you is I actually want to show you one of the most unique venues uh, that I've never seen before on any ship uh, in service. And one of the most unique venues that everyone misses is this gentleman right here who is working at the poorhouse and no one talks about the growlers so i want to uh can you pull one of the growlers just so i can show people that uh you know what's cool is you can actually get a growler of beer on board we have one sitting in the fridge and you can rent a growler of beer and can look right in there and you can fill it up right there we can fill it up and you pay a little deposit and you you got your growler of beer you bring it back you get the deposit back we're almost at the end of our beer there but this is called the Poor House, and they have beers that are local to Miami. Question for you: Did you, when you were, were you here in the UK? Did you have like local UK beers when you were in the UK or Miami beers? Oh, okay. So nothing. Spe so mainly, the, did you have the Miami beers in the UK or no? You had the Miami beers in the UK. So that's kind of cool. All right, thank you. So you'll see again. There's the uh, the little. Uh, Ice cream game show right there going on. And if we go this way, got a whole bunch of varied seating. All the seating's a little bit different here. So all the seating on board is a little bit different in the scheme of things. But let's go ahead and let's go to the ice cream parlor. Included in your cruise is actually hard packed ice cream. So real hard packed ice cream there. I'm not going to eat an entire cone right now, but you'll see right there which of the following was created it's called lick me till ice cream can i taste the key lime pie a little taste there we'll take a little taste you get different flavor cones there and everything like that thank you very much hmm. a little loud in there next up is the pizza place this is open every night until 1.30 a.m. And uh, well, let's go right there. So this is open every night until 1.30 a.m. They make you all kinds of custom pizzas. So we'll see the pizza place. Nice little hand washing station right there. And if we go along, we've got some grab and go selections, sandwiches, salads, things like that. And also grab and go beer. And strangely on this cruise, uh, most of the bars are closing at 1 a.m. So this is open till 1.30. Uh, you, you can get some beer here until 1.30. And we've got the nice little, we got a big pizza oven, lots of different toppings. They do have some set pizzas that you can get. Take, you can welcome to pause for those set pizzas. Hold it there for another couple seconds. They have set pizzas, but you can mix and match ingredients and really cool. They have these nice to-go boxes from the pizza place. Nice to go boxes. You get a little buzzer. The buzz you're running this buzzer. This is where we're winding up about 1.20 a.m. every night. Nice team. They're always throwing the pizza. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here. I did not know the dough was nice and hand stretched right there, but he is throwing 
the dough. Hopefully making the dough too, and I'm not talking about the pizza dough. <laughs> making the good dough for throwing the dough. But that is the pizza place. We're gonna move on to another venue here. So again, this all comes right off of the main grand foyer. I think they are just wrapping up the ice cream game show. We're gonna try and avoid that right now. But we will take a walk back. This is the main midship elevator deck, main midship elevator location. And we'll go back towards the coffee shop, which has been open quite limited hours. I don't know if it's standard that it's open that much limited hours, but open quite limited hours overall. I don't drink coffee, but they have a selection of different pastries, cookies and things like that. Then you get rid of coffee. And I think they even have kombucha. So they've got kombucha and we've got now the Instagram hallway, essentially. Uh, live, breathe, laugh, and love in the Instagram hallway right there. It's not really gonna focus because there's a significant amount of light there. They are backlit and they do have some photo booths here, which kind of interestingly, you can't pay with your card. You have to actually pay with cash. And this is something they were doing earlier in the day. We've got a bit of a kind of paint by numbers, live life colorfully right there. And what we've got next is we've got an area called the social club. And the social club is kind of like the, the game club of the entire boat. And we've got the gamer. Oh, yeah. We got the gamer right here, just kind of hanging out. He's got a whole bunch of games and you run game shows. You got a game show later tonight, I think? Uh, or? Yes, we have uh, Salt and Trivia and Risky Quiz for that. And that's uh, what, like 7.30, 8 o'clock, something you know, Times are weird. Times are weird, but check the app. The <laughs> app does actually work now. They did an app update. Go ahead, guys. They did an app update, but you can actually borrow a lot of different games from here. And you can take it with your nice big uh, growler of beer you got over at the beer place. 7 to 8, and then also Risky Quizness, 9 to 10. 9 to 10, Risky Quizness. Perfect. <laughs> and then we've got these guys right here. These nice little... Ooh, that was bad. And this is the social club, and they do have a different ice cream floats, alcoholic and non-alcoholic ice cream floats, as well as hot dogs and pretzels and other things of the sort that are generally available here. Very limited hours in the day, but are generally available in this location. And you've got a bar that people have trouble finding. It's called the Loose Cannon. See, it's right back here. I've had to help a lot of people actually find it during this sailing, but you'll see. There is the Loose Cannon, a nautical themed bar right there. Got our bartender right there. And you've got the bell, which if you know anything about sailing, that keeps the spirits away. So not going to drive that guy crazy anymore. One ring. Uh, and we've got, uh, what's the name of the drinks that you get on the, on the Kraken? Oh, you just started here. Okay. So you got, you got a, a drink that you can actually get multiple arms of for the uh, for the Kraken right there. They've got him. And this is in the Loops Cannon, which is kind of the British pub themed area. And in the social club, you've got a bit of a game room as well with big foosball tables, big air hockey tables, and everything of the sort, as well as a gigantic, 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 game room all free play so that's the cool thing there's a mirror looks a little bigger than it actually is but it is actually all free play games right there and we are going to move on and move back towards the dock house so as we move on and move back towards the dock house we are still in the times of covid so sanitized they do use a mist sanitization, so it just kind of mist your hands. You'll see it a little wet there. Uh, M-I-S-T, not M-I-S-S-E-D. But this is the social club, and it should get quite a bit quieter as we move on to the dock house. So the dock house is actually interesting because it is a bar, uh, you know, traditional ship bar, 
but they also have different food that's available while you are drinking. So they have both cold and hot food while you are drinking at the Dock House Bar. And you'll see, I'll, show, I'll take you to the hot food in a minute, but you'll see you've got the cold food right there, but selection of cold appetizers. I actually had that guy earlier today. And we've got a whole bunch of different cold food, hot food, things of the sort. And if we take a look, actually one of my favorite bars, because what's cool is you have these little flags that you can raise up. And if you're hungry, you want to order something to eat, you just raise the flag. And when you raise the flag, you can actually order open fire grill. I did this on the first day on board. They got goat cheese polenta, grilled shrimp, Spanish octopus, fire roasted chicken tuss thigh, and hanger steak. And you'll see it says open fire grill. And I go open fire. No way you've got open fire on a cruise ship. Because on a cruise ship, having something open fire is a little bit weird. I'll show you in a minute. But we do have to pass by. This is back kind of in between the dock house inside and outside. Not sure if it's part of the same venue. This is their juice bar. Well, they make a bunch of cold pressed juices. Usually this is attached to say like the spa, but here it is attached to the dock house or maybe its own thing. And then you've also got some grab and go food right here, much like in the pizza place. And you'll see that also in the not a buffet buffet, which we'll get up to in a little bit. But uh, you've got this nice open area in the back. Again, we are on deck seven. So we're on deck seven. See this nice green area, nice blue sky. And oh, they've got bags. But we can see right there, and they also have a wood fired grill. So they are making on that wood fired grill. That is actual fire on a wood fire grill, making some steak right now, right? He's making some steak with real fire. So, you've got a nice little outside area that they can use real fire at regularly. I've seen real fire used for special occasions on cruise ships, but I've never seen it used on a normal basis. So that's actually pretty insane to see real fire used on a normal basis. Now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go inside to the wake, which is the steakhouse on board. And let's jump in the wake. Just going right back in on deck seven. So right back in on deck seven. Excuse me. Sorry. Let's take a look at the wake. Just peek in real quick. So this is the wake. This is the steakhouse on board. Uh, they do not have, very strangely, uh, unless it's an upcharge, which they do have an upcharge that has a giant seafood tower, they actually do not have surf and turf on this ship. You cannot get lobster and steak together without a giant upcharge platter. This is the only place that actually has lobster on the entire Scarlet Lady. This is the only location in the wake that actually has lobster, but it does also have a beautiful view. So if I go down, you'll see this beautiful view and why they call it the wake is well once we clear up here what can you see right from the back well you can see the wake of the actual ship so take a look nice restaurant it you enter on deck seven but it is functionally on deck six and that has caused some confusion as to you know exactly where the restaurant happens to lie it's actually all the restaurants on board are actually quite large. Oh, he's preparing for dinner. There we go. The restaurants on board are actually quite large. Uh, Virgin Voyages includes all of their, essentially other cruise lines. We call these specialty restaurants. We'll take a look at all of them as we continue on with this tour. Uh, so we've seen one part of deck seven. We've seen the aft part of deck seven, but I want to go back up to deck seven, which is kind of the main entry deck, the promenade deck. The, you know, if you're on a Royal Caribbean ship, you would call this deck essentially the Royal Promenade here. So we'll continue back to essentially the Royal Promenade or the, an oasis, you know, one of the neighborhoods, or any of the classes of ships, kind of where the shops happen to be, even though they're not as much on this floor. So we're continuing back right here. They do have bathrooms kind of tucked into corners. The bathrooms, like this is the men's bathroom. And the ladies' bathroom's a bit further. They're kind of tucked into some corners here. So, overall, an interesting layout. 
And like I said, we've got our little paint by numbers, which I assume is on fabric so they can wash it for every sailing. Yeah. And the nice little Instagram wall again, which says live, breathe, laugh, and love. Walking back through the coffee bar. Again, not a coffee drinker, but you've got free pastries, and this is where you can get your cookies. If you want to get some cookies, you can get some cookies right there. Now this area is mainly was mainly used for Scarlet Night, which is like the formal night on board. And you'll see there's varying different chairs of varying different sizes. Kind of looks like someone went to an Ikea and just pointed and said, this one, this one, this one, that one, that one, this one. And then we'll take a look at the grand foyer right here. The equivalent of the grand foyer. There's no bar directly down there, but there is one slightly around the corner. And then we've got a red table, which is kind of a backup guest services, as well as dining and entertainment bookings. And you've got your shore excursions, where on the last day, so you're not gonna see any shore excursions of the Miami and your future cruise sales location. Got the dock house, not, not the dock house, we got the place we got beer at when we came on board in the tour first. And then this is actually the record store. So you got a place for a DJ to set up and you've got all these different records you can purchase as well as some record players and other audio gear. But moving on. Next is the champagne bar. Uh, so you've got the champagne bar right here. Again, this is the main drag, main deck of the, the ship, where most stuff actually happens to be. So there's your champagne bar. We're headed towards the front of the ship right now. We were in the back, remember, uh, we were looking at food. So food is in the back and entertainment is generally in the front of the ship. So got a nice mirrored hallway right there. This is the classy champagne bar of the ship right here. Hey, she's got it. And we've got a giant, giant, giant bottle of champagne right there. This is the red room. You might try and take a peek of the red room from deck seven, but this is their theater venue. I'm gonna try and go up to deck seven and we'll see. Uh, it's actually set up for their main show, which is called Dual Reality. Kind of like a high school gymnasium. That's how it's set up, you know, with a, and it's a Romeo and Juliet retelling. Again, sort of like a high school gymnasium overall. And let's see if the karaoke place is open. So they do have a kind of do your own thing karaoke bar called the Groupie. Just sneak in there real quick and you can go in and that one's closed. Set up in progress. Room is unavailable. Let's see if anybody's in here. The pink room. Oh, I haven't been in the pink room yet. But instead of having karaoke where you're screaming, yelling, and annoying other people, you can actually just annoy yourself if you wanted to. So let's see. We've got these little touch screen. We can choose something. Hmm. TikTok. 100 all-time karaoke, divorce party, girls' bands, jukebox, K-pop. Let's do some Disney. Hmm. Aladdin, okay. Let's go for Circle of Life. And you'll hit it right there. And you'll just say, okay, I want to sing this song. Grab your microphone. And get demonetized. Got the mic right there. Gives you the key and everything. I don't think that's going to help much. From the day we arrived on the planet and blinking stepped into the sun 
There's more to be seen than can ever be seen. More to do than can ever be done. Some say eat or be eaten. Some say live and let live. But all are agreed as they join the stampede. You should never take more than you give. It's the circle of life. It's the wheel of fortune. It's the leap of faith. It's the band of hope. Till we find our place. On the path unwinding in the circle, the circle of life. And now we stop it. Stop it. There we go. A little idea on how their karaoke rooms work. I think during busier cruises, you do have to actually sign up right there. But you could see they even have props, I guess they would sometimes uh, sell there. But that was uh, my bad rendition of the Circle of Life from the Lion King. Take the stairs up to deck seven, uh, to deck, uh, we're on deck seven. Take the stairs up to deck eight real quick. Just see if we can peek into the red room if there's another entrance up there. Don't want to go in, doors are closed there. And there's not seem to be another entrance to the red room down there. Uh, up on deck eight. Overall. So I don't want to sneak in, break in, but that is kind of the venue that is used for the production shows overall. Maybe we'll see if we can just peek in just a drop. Are they rehearsing? Oh, there we go. Oh, this is actually in the top floor. So that's the top floor. We're doing rehearsal right now. But that is the top floor on deck seven. And you've got a lower floor on deck six. Eight through 14 are mainly passenger cabin decks. And probably the bridge is on one of those decks there as well. But let's go ahead and let's go down to deck six. So we'll go seven, six, five, and then four, and then straight at the top and back down. So, we're on deck six right now. Again, like I said, we did seven. Saw the pizza place, saw the coffee place, saw the roundabout, the loose cannon, the dock and the dock house, the social club, the arcade, the sip lounge, which we walked through, that was the fancy place. We saw the wake, the manor, which we have not seen quite yet, but we'll look at it on this deck, the draft house, the groupie, and the red room. But if we go this way, oh, there's a little more of the, the red room. Not going to sneak in there right now, but essentially that is the main production venue they are rehearsing right now. Give you kind of a little idea of what it looks like in Scarlet Night, which was interesting, but you'll see right there. We've got them. I'm not going to go all the way in and get you get the rehearsal, but you know, sail into something spectacular, kind of a Branson line right there. And that is the main uh, showroom on board. And then next we've got, we're on the front of the boat. Remember, entertainment in the front, food in the back. So that is true of pretty much every cruise ship in the world, kind of period, done, end of story. And we're gonna walk through the casino. Very small casino overall, but they do have all the classics. They got the slot machines, they got the tables. It is closing at rather early hours, because as I said, there's only 800 people on board and there's not much of a nightlife with this current crew. Uh, not crew, not another crew, but the current set of guests, but they have a giant LED screen all over. These do not come cheap. So these are giant all over, showing different things. And like I said again, they do not come cheap at all. And then that is the manor, which is the nightclub on board. We'll try and take a peek at it from deck seven. I know a way to get in from deck seven in a second. 
And you've got the casino bar right there. The Manor's the main nightclub on board. Again, it's been closing about 1.30. Uh, and what we've got here, we've now got Squid Ink. This is something very unique on this ship overall, not something I've seen on a ship before. It is a tattoo parlor at sea. And we'll just peek in there to the tattoo parlor at sea. So we've got our tattoo parlor at sea. And you'll see that we've got the liquor store. We're going into the shops area, the high street shops. You've got the shops area, you got the liquor store. You've got the cosmetic store right there. You've got some spa facilities down here, which is Stubble and Groom, which is the barber shop. And you've got the ladies' side as well, the dry dock where you can get blowouts and other things of that sort. So just peer in there. And you've got the high-end shops, so they don't separate by deck here. You pretty much have all the shops in one place. So you have the Bulgari shop. I have a friend who's going to be joining and taking over that shop very soon. And we've got the high-end watch shops and the merchandise store for actual Virgin specific merchandise specific to, I believe, just the Virgin cruise lines there. You got some unique stuff, some, some really unique things here like this book light, which I actually have one of these at home, and some lights and things that I haven't really seen on cruise ships before, as well as like cables from Native Union and wireless chargers and the sort overall. And a whole sundry shop that's got the standards as well as some unique things in here. Hi. Well, hello. How are you? Good, good. And some unique chargers and wireless chargers because now all phones have wireless charging and I'll just go this will show you kind of what they have on board sundry wise if you do forget anything at home go back up again what they've got on board sundry wise thank you and this is so far the best restaurant we've gone to on board of the boat which is extra virgin which is the Italian restaurant came here last night which was the second to last night of the cruise we are in the pink agave tonight but just to take a quick look around we've got good good just taking a little look right here again another big rest so these are the restaurants that are included you do have to book them uh, but they are included they're very up to the specialty restaurants of other lines this was I, I do come from a celebrity background this is their equivalent to say a Tuscan Grill and it's better than Tuscan Grill if you're familiar with Royal Caribbean it's better than Jamie's Italian uh, overall had here last night uh, the meatballs are fantastic as is the oxtail ravioli that is absolutely fantastic as well weird thing again the bathroom placement's kind of strange on this ship this is the men's bathroom i'm going to show you so this is right outside of the uh, italian restaurant i want to show you what it takes to get to the women's bathroom because they're not like right next door they're actually much further away so we're extra virgin right now i'm showing you all this in real time so if we take a look at what it takes to get to the women's bathroom we're going to pass back by the logo shop it's a bit of a trek. Bit of a trek overall to get back to the women's bathroom. Again, got these all over. Hand sanitizer and it is spray. So you see, it just kind of spritzed me there. It's a spray. But to get to the ladies' bathroom, you've got to go all the way to the other side. Now this is a place coming up that I actually spent a lot of time in over the entire sailing because they have a lot of their food and drink seminars in here. This is called the Test Kitchen. When I first came here, I will apologize. This is, has very bad lighting for cameras. They probably should have thought about that for video cameras. Uh, just this restaurant for some reason. And it's because of the color temperature of their LEDs. But I thought this was like a cuisine on Celebrity, but it's more like a high volume chef's table. Is really what they're going for there. It's more of a high volume chef's table. Lots of different dishes that are available here. And it's kind of set up like a flask and a bar and 
everything like that. We actually did a cocktail demonstration about an hour ago right here. This is why this is not set up. And then this morning did a food demonstration on the other, they call it horseshoe there, but they have a bar, huge bar actually right here that they've got set up for service. Got that giant bar. It's already opening for me there. And some really nice views to the outside, but this is kind of the experimental restaurant that's kind of very similar to a chef's table or a pairing table or a tasting table. And you can pair wine, you can pair cocktails, you can pair beer. It is a six course menu. It's not giant courses, but you can pair your wine, you can pair your beer, you can pair your cocktails with anything going on here. We are actually on deck six. So we've taken a look at uh, two, uh, three of the restaurants that are bookable for dinner. Uh, so far, we've taken a look at Test Kitchen, we've taken a look at uh, Extra Virgin, and we've taken a look at The Wake. So Test Kitchen, Extra Virgin, and The Wake. We'll just take a look at the wall right there, and these nice high table seatings. And you shall see got all the different elements that can make up food. Again, not the best, uh, not the best uh, LEDs overall for video. So we're gonna go right back by the shops and see if we can peek into the manor. It's closed from the front, but I think we can get there on the top floor to take a look. So let us see. Got some more shops, handbag shops, makeup shops, perfume shops, everything like that. The shops are actually run on board by Harding Brothers, not LVMH, but Harding Brothers. We'll finish deck six and then we'll go up and see a little bit more of what is going on here. So we've got, we've just walked by those sections. Let's go ahead and actually, let's go down and cover some of the other restaurants and we'll come back this way. So we're gonna go down, take it to deck five. Which we're on the midship elevators right now. Midship staircase. Going right on down. We got a Ghostbuster. Ghostbusters! It's always good to see a Ghostbuster here in case we have any people to die on board, but this ain't Princess, uh, so nobody's really gonna die on board. But you've got the sailor services and the guest services there. And you just kind of see them hanging out right here. And I will tell you. So this is the guest services. Not really like a line, like traditional guest services, more of a pod. But this is the last restaurant on board that I have not been to yet because uh, we're actually booked here tonight. This is the Mexican restaurant. Currently opens about a half an hour after all the other restaurants, meaning it stays open a half an hour later. So if you're a late diner and want to eat after 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night, pink agave may be your place. Again, have not eaten here yet, so I can't really give you an opinion on the food. Uh, this is the only restaurant I can actively say I can't give you an opinion if I wanted to. But you'll see right here, also a very, very nice selection of tequilas here. They're locked behind the grate right now, but you can see one of the favorites I saw here the other day was Terramana, which was kind of hanging out back here. Uh, let's just we'll peek that little camera lens. It's the benefit of having a tiny, tiny camera lens. Hmm. Can't really see much there, but this is the Mexican kind of small dish restaurant on board that you can actually go to. And most of these specialty restaurants, this is another one that you can book. This is open for dinner only. So you do have Razzle Dazzle, which we're going to head to next, as well as The Wake, which is the steakhouse that we were in before. Kind of very inspired by the entrance to Tuscan Grill, but with its own special flair if you've sailed on Celebrity before. So you do have uh, Razzle Dazzle as well as The Wake, which are open for lunch on every day as well. So not just on sea days. Most of the time, you know, the specialty restaurants will just be open on sea days. But you've got Razzle Dazzle right here, which we will go to next. And we are on deck five, I believe. And Razzle Dazzle is actually named, I learned this on a little tour we did, Razzle Dazzle is named after the way they painted the ships, uh, the UK ships back in the day, to actually prevent them from being seen. So 
kind of a cool thing. Uh, and you'll see that carries into the restaurant as well. So we've got Razzle right there. And you'll look, if you look in the hallway, you'll see it has that, give them the old Razzle Dazzle. And there is the actual restaurant. This is a vegetarian forward place, but they do have chicken and other dishes as well that have meat inside of them. So again, ve vegetarian forward, ve vegetarian and vegan forward, but not vegetarian and vegan only. We ate here, had the fairy toast, had the chicken sandwich. It was actually the best fried chicken on board. I'm gonna be honest with you. I think it's the only fried chicken I've had on board. So that's why I can say it's the best fried chicken on board, but it was pretty damn good fried chicken. Uh, so you see, they've got Razzle Dazzle, which is like a test pattern for my camera right here. Now I wanna take a look at the map and see what we have not seen on the lower decks. I do wanna see if I can sneak us in and take a look at the manor, and we'll talk about some of the other events that went on. But we'll see, we're leaving Razzle Dazzle. Something really cool is they've actually marked the ribs on the boat. So you can see 144, 140. These are actually the ribs that hold the steel together. That's my guess. I think it's a good guess as to what's going on there. I don't think they're cabin numbers or anything like that. 148 and 152. Those are actually the ribs that are holding everything together. Let's take a look at the map, make sure that we've seen everything so far. Talk about something that's on the map that uh, does not exist right now. Kind of interesting. So we're on deck five. I'm getting down on the floor to show you this on deck four. There's a mysterious bar that does not exist uh, officially that uh, I've seen some videos of, and it's actually a bar that was serving drinks during in the pre-pandemic days. They were serving drinks in I IV bags, having people dressed as nurses, and it's really right down by the medical center. Saw some videos of it. Uh, it's right now used for storage. Uh, a friend of mine went down. We're not going to take pictures and show something they're using as storage right now. But uh, it was a medical themed bar, which people would be dressed as nurses and have IV bags and everything like that. And you'd basically go in as a patient. And in the days of COVID, probably not the greatest thing. We saw the shops, we saw this. So let's see on deck five. Uh, we're not gonna go into the spa right now. Razzle Dazzle, I do wanna try and show you. Um, you've got the test kitchen, high street casino on the rocks. We missed that. So let's go back there. And you got the manor, extra virgin, the roundabout, the smoking room. It's just the smoking room inside of the casino. Seen everything on deck seven, so yep. Now it's time to actually take a walk, uh, take an elevator ride up to 15, 16, 17, and my favorite floor, deck 17 and a half. But let's first check out on the rocks. Well, oh, that's the spa. Well, we were talking about not looking at the spa, but let's just look at the spa real quick. Ta da! That's the spa right there. There we go. So you got the spa right there. Not going to walk and talk at the spa. But let's go up to deck six. We want to take a look at the cocktail bar. That's where we end most evenings is in the cocktail bar, which is up until 1 a.m. And there's often, as long as the band's not being used for something else like they were last night, there's often live music going on in that bar as well. So let's take a look. All right. We are at, all right. This is kind of the Grand Foyer Central area. And then we've got the Sip Bar, which is the cocktail bar on board. If you want a cocktail, you want a good cocktail, you want a tiki drink, anything you want. This guy makes an inverted Long Island iced tea. Right, you're the inverted Long Island iced tea guy, yeah. You got the Coke on the bottom, kind of floats right there. But let's go ahead, let's try and take a peek at the manor from deck seven. So we're gonna go up, we we'll use the second floor entrance. So this is the main staircase in the center, kind of like the atrium, the grand foyer. They did some dancing on this staircase and everything of that sort. Just to give you a little bit of wayfinding, we are back to where we started. So we've circled back to exactly where we started right here where you actually get on an embarkation at least in Miami. Record store, future cruise sales. But let's go ahead and let's take a look. 
at the Manor, which is their nightclub on board. It's also used as an entertainment venue. They did a workout class on there based on the 80s. Just see what we can see. Hopefully there's not out slice on us. Oh, right, there we go. So, there's the Manor. Looks like they're set up for some form of entertainment in the manor this evening to kind of cap off the cruise. They got a cabaret set up in there now. Now we're walking back to somewhere we've actually been before. So we're walking around. We're walking back to somewhere we've been before. Just to give you an idea. And let's go ahead and let's get in the elevator and head on up. So we're going to go as high as we can go, 17, 17 and a half, 18, there is actually a floor 13, uh, it's kind of interesting, uh, but you'll see, 15, 16, 17, elevators generally come relatively fast on this boat because there's only 800 guests on board. So let's see, elevator timer, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, four Mississippi. That's not bad waiting for an elevator. And the elevators are all projectioned and screened and everything like that. Let's go up to 15. Oh, that's cool. Just gonna look at the screen on our ride up. Good ice cream? The malted milkshake, the strawberry one? It was, yeah. It's actually okay. It's good, I just don't like the nuts. Yeah, they put nuts in like three out of the seven that they offered. That's why they gotta ask if you have allergies every time. Mm -hmm. Everything's like, do you have oh, allergies? Put nuts in him. Like, I'm like, why do you just put nuts don't in put nuts, nuts in everything? <laughs> I agree. Mm -hmm. All right, so we gotta go up to 15, 16, 17. We're gonna get as high as we can on the boat. Let us see. So elevators only get you so far here on certain decks. So we are on deck 16. I don't know that we can get to 17 right here, uh, but let's go ahead. This is actually an interesting venue. This is their equivalent of like an outside, uh, oh, no, this is not the grill. This is not the grill side. We'll go to the grill side. But they have their equivalent of like a poolside eating area that we'll go out to. I'll show you this. It's open very limited hours, just from noon to noon to five. Got a nice little DJ. Hey. It looks like they've even closed this. So this has poke bowls and different things like that. It's called the Sun Club Cafe. More limited hours than pretty much any venue on board. And then this guy right here, by this guy I mean, this is called Richard's Rooftop. So this is a suite only area, uh, reserved for suite guests only, which they call rock stars. And rock stars have a different color band than the normies. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at the pool deck. Actually, let's take a look at the running track. Let's see if we can find a way up there. So a little over the pool deck right now. Look at these little, little different cabanas and everything like that. So how do we get up to the running track? You can tell I don't run much because I've yet to figure out how to get up to the running track. But I don't know if this is where you can get up. Let's see. So we're in the front. I don't understand. Whoa. Siri. Okay. I like the running tracks actually up here. Running tracks in the back. Yep. So we are on deck 16 right now. And this is the deck directly above the pool deck. I'll show you a little bit of what's going on in the pool. This is, to give you time, this is about 5.20 in the afternoon on a sea day. Tiny, tiny pool with two people in it. So it's not that tiny. 
Funkin' Terry. So it's an Italian chip, not a German chip. Because it's Funkin' Terry, and we're headed towards the back. Now, why are we headed towards the back? Because entertainment in the front and food in the back. So we're gonna head towards the back. That is the running track, which actually interestingly has its own deck. So it is on deck 17 and a half. Uh, and it's kind of interesting that it's on deck 17 and a half. So normal people that aren't working out, that aren't running, will not get uh, bothered. You know, the runners won't get bothered by them. And you've also got these cabanas that are right here. Different numbered cabanas. 10, nine, closed right now. If we can find one, we'll peek, take a peek inside. Make sure no one's in them. Okay. Doesn't say closed. So, you see, I would assume you rent these out for the sailing. And they got a fridge, they got a bed, they got some privacy there. Let's see. Just a whole bunch of empty beer glasses. How sad is that? And you got USBs right there, as well as normal plugs. So, quite a useful feature to have there. Again, these are, I believe, rentable over your sailing. And we're headed back towards like where the, typically most ships would call where we're headed to kind of a special definition of the sunset bar or some kind of bar to do with sunset. So let's take a walk back to the equivalent of the sunset bar. We've got a basketball court. We got these guys. Find things out the way. Free to use. No quarter needed. No room key swipe needed. The one thing we don't have here is actual beverage packages. So they have something called a, a bar tab, which if you put $300 on it, it gives you an extra $125 in spendable cash uh, on your account. Got giant, uh, giant chest right here. And we got some music going on in the back. And some hot tubs. Oh, yeah. Got a little concert going on in the back. And this right here is the net. And what's scary about this is you're actually looking down directly at the ocean and I was gonna, gonna do it. Oh, a little scary. A lot of scary. It's a net right over the ocean. Whoa. And this is essentially the sunset bar on many different ships out there nowadays. And this is the giant net, which goes right over. The, if you remember, we were down earlier at the dock house. That is the dock house below. And then the wake kind of ties everything together as to where we were before. We've got a couple other places to check out. Oh. So that's called the triple net because I guess there's three things to prevent you from dying. music here then you'll see if we go down this is their not a buffet buffet welcome to the not a buffet buffet so this is the 
Nada Buffet Buffet. We're entering through the back end of the Nada Buffet Buffet. Hi, bud. Thank you. I don't think we're at meal time right now. So, what they've done is they've kind of gone with like a food hall theme. So, you've got sandwiches right there, generally speaking. Some ramen noodles right here, which are open until 11.30 in the evening. That noodle around. Miso udon. Pause so you can see right there. Another nice thing, no need to worry about paying for sodas. So you just go right there. Ice comes towards you. No ice, okay. We'll go with a Coke with no ice. Got these Coke machines right here. A little bit of Coke. Interesting for the Fanta lovers in the world, you've actually got not neon orange Fanta, but European Fanta. So you'll see the color. That is not American Fanta. And I've just made myself what they call Mezzo Mix, which is a drink of Coke and Fanta that is available in Germany. Again, not meal times right now. Meal times in about an hour. So they don't have that there, but one thing they do have all day, except when they clean it one hour a day, is all day breakfast. So we got popsicles. So you can have all you want to eat popsicles there. Got the popsicle cart. And then all the time, all you can eat breakfast. So diner and dash, uh, all day breakfast. Not all you can eat breakfast, but probably all you can eat too. So all day breakfast, you can get omelets, you can get other things like that. And we got the burger bar open. We do have some of the stuff in the front open right here. Got focaccias. We got desserts. Actually, not tried anything from this dessert bar because I don't believe any of it's actually made on the ship. I think they're purchased desserts, uh, so I don't want to. Uh, but you'll see the daily mix, which is where you get your salads. And I'll take you around to the main entrance because the main entrance is the main entrance. Uh, you've got kind of a second coffee shop up here. Grounds Club is the name of the first one. You've got the second coffee shop. And again, you have this, you'll see this is a theme going throughout. You've got the grab and go food. So you get it packaged, ready to grab and go. Thres leches cake, uh, dark chocolate, vegetable wrap, charcuterie board, vegetable salad. You've even got the, the dressings packaged separate, roasted chicken salad, smoked turkey breast wrap, Caesar salad. The grab and go is relatively healthy. It's not cheeseburgers and all that, but trust me, you can get cheeseburgers and all that stuff. I want to pop into the other side, potentially to get some ice for my drink. Because the ice machine was out. But this is the main entrance to the Not A Buffet Buffet called The Galley. And again, you got the grab and go food right there. Same grab and go as the other side. And you even have a bento box place, which has all kinds of bento boxes. Grab some ice, like I said, it kind of sh shoots out towards you. One-handed, it's a little hard. All right, so you've got your bento boxes of all kinds of different sushi. So sushi available, sushi available all day. We've got, uh, what are those? Oh, that's a cucumber avocado roll, salmon avocado roll, spicy tuna roll, prawn tempura roll, and you've got a sushi cobbler roll, so that's got, I think, all of them inside of it. One other kind of interesting thing here is they also do have 24-hour pour-yourself wine and beer right here, and you just tap your little magic uh, bracelet, and you've got 24-hour uh, beer pours itself once you tap your magic bracelet, and 24-hour wine pours itself once you tap your magic bracelet. All we've got left is the pool deck and the fitness center, so let's jump to the pool deck and the fitness center. All right, fitness center and pool deck. But I think we've seen everything after that. So this is the 
I'm burning. Here we go. So this is a cardio area. Nice cardio area up here. We've got some cycling. All brand new equipment from Techno Gym. Most cruise ships are using Techno Gym, and maybe you'll have Peloton or someone for their cycling. And let us take a look at the pool deck. Then we'll review the map and see if we missed anything. So again, big cardio area, huge cardio area. Now there's been a lot of controversy over the pool and the size of the pool. So there are actually two pools. So this thing right here in the middle is the pool as well. Strangely, you've got exercise equipment right out by the pool. So you have that exercise equipment right out there by the pool. The only place you can get a pina colada on board or any kind of frozen drink is at the pool bar. They're the only place with blenders. Nowhere else can you get a frozen drink. Uh, you have to get a frozen drink at the pool bar. Kind of an interesting fact of life. And you've got over on this side, for a gym perspective, you've got your strength training. So, this is where your weights are. We saw cardio on one side. And we'll just peek in there. You got weights on the other side. Oh, he's got me. Thank you, bud. Thank you. So you got your weights right there. He was working out hard. <laughs> More techno gym equipment there. This is for your core and your weight training there. Let's take a look at the pool deck. And then we will review the map and make sure we didn't miss anything. Let us review. All right, so we're now down on the pool deck. We've been above the pool deck. They're removing the sun loungers for the day. These things are what fills up first. So if you look at these guys right here, very loud, but you look at these guys right by the pool, that's what fills up first in the day. These sun loungers right there. Fill up first. Very loud. Apologize. But let's go to the quietest place on the ship, which is right next to one of the loudest places on the ship. Oh, totally found this by mistake the other day. But there is actually a hidden venue here that is very, very quiet. I think this is it. Yes. So it's called The Scene, and it's right next to the really loud pool deck, and it's just quietness. I think it's a special events venue or probably like their version of a conference room. Beautiful lookout windows. They expect to use it because someone's filling the hand sanitizer here, at least I hope they are. Yeah, filling the hand sanitizer there. And what's really cool is uh, you got a nice view. You are literally five seconds from the pool. So if you want to go from the nice quiet, you see no noise in here at all. If you want to go from the nice quiet here to the loudness of the pool, you open this door and let the party begin. But this is called the scene. Not really sure what this is for. Uh, nobody's used it the entire cruise. So. As far as we've seen, nobody's used it for the entire sailing. So let's go ahead and let us review what we've seen and see if we've actually missed anything. I don't think we have. Boom. All right. Taking a look at the map on the elevator right now. The runway, which is the jogging track we saw from below. We don't want to jog right now. The cabana, as we saw. Training camp, Sun Club Cafe, Sun Club, Richard's Rooftop we didn't see because we can't see, Aquatic Club, Aquatic Club Bar, Galley, Gun Bay we didn't look at. That's actually the Korean barbecue restaurant uh, that's on board. And uh, you know what, let's, uh, let's take a look there, kind of give you a bit of a review. I do apologize that we missed the Korean barbecue, but it's in the back of the galley. So let's take a quick walk there. Try and go up a deck. 
so we don't have to hear the music nearly as loud. Pool deck is emptying out. It is about 5.30, 5.35 p.m. So you'll see the pool deck has cleared its way out because everybody went back to go get showered and changed for dinner. But when they did Scarlet Night and other events like that, that was on the pool deck. So we're actually going to wind up ending up at Gun Bay. Uh, we're on deck 15. We need to be on deck 15. This is the one restaurant we missed. Very loud restaurant, very interesting restaurant. Something I've never seen on a ship before. I've seen many places that have teppanyaki, which is uh, like Benihana or Kobe, if you're from Orlando or anywhere like that, where they cook the food right in front of you. But this is Gun Bay, which is a Korean barbecue restaurant. They don't let you cook the food yourself anymore. They do actually have someone guide you through cooking it. But let's go ahead. We're jumping back into the galley and we're gonna end at Gun Bay. Because other than Gun Bay, I think we've seen everything. This is the last of the included specialty restaurants and actually one of the first ones to actually fill up. Uh, this one was filled up pretty much on day one for the entire sailing. I think they even added an earlier opening time so they could get more people in here. You do want to make sure that you book as soon as you can. The ship is literally sitting at only one third capacity and the restaurants are already filling up. So this is Gun Bay Korean barbecue. And you'll see right here. Just taking a peek. What a video. Hello! Is it safety drill? You're wearing the safety drill? Oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's a safety drill. It is a part of the... Uh, oh, bravo, 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 right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> bravo, 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 safety drill. <laughs> so they've got this Korean barbecue right there. But the reason they really wear that is those are long sleeves so they can actually cook in them. And they can cook their... Uh, cook the Korean barbecue right there. Thank you. Thank you. I want to end in one of the most unique locations if the battery will allow me to make it. I do want to end back on the net. So we're going to try and head out there. If we do cut off, we do cut off. We're shooting in 4K, 60 frames per second. So quickly, quickly, let us head back out to the back of, oh, to the back of the boat, back of the ship on deck 16. And end again on one of the most unique features which is the giant net. Anything like that yet? They are going into Miami tomorrow. So if you're a cruise ship person, USPH, you know you don't want to open many food venues because if you open them today, you got to clean them tonight. So, nice automatic doors. Didn't even have to do anything for that one. But let us end it right up here on the net. A little quieter right now. And we've got the net right here. Ooh. Which you can see right there in the wake. I'll take off the shoes real quick. Ooh. And that is a quick tour in about an hour of everything that you can see on the Virgin Voyages Scarlet Lady. I leave you with the wake and the giant net. And that is all we wrote. This is Richard with your quick tour on the net. You can see the water below me of the Virgin Voyages Scarlet Lady. <laughs>